Hi there, we're going to start our next video for chapter two. I think it's video number three. In order to do this, I need to share my screen so you'll know what's going on. And so as you see, we're working on the examples. So this first example has to do with a car traveling at 20 meters per second comes to a complete stop in five seconds. What's the acceleration? So what you want to do is write down your knowns, your finds, and your formulas. You can see under the formulas, I've listed the four formulas I said you needed to know that average velocity is change in distance over change in time. That another way to write that is V final plus V initial divided by two is change in distance over change in time, delta X over delta T. Acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. And that change in position is initial velocity multiplied by t plus one half times a t squared. Be careful to use parentheses, not x's or dots to indicate multiplication. Every time you work a problem, you really ought to do uh, a list of what you know, what you're trying to find, and your formulas. It'll make it so much easier to get the correct answer and so much easier if you make a mistake this will help you find your mistakes so after we've got it set up with knowns finds and formulas we read through the statement of the problem and summarize the information so a car traveling at 20 meters per second that is the starting velocity so under our knowns, we're going to write down that V0 equals 20 meters per second. The next thing we find in the sentence is that it comes to a complete stop. That means that the final velocity is zero. The final velocity is zero. And then we see that it does it in five seconds. That in five seconds, is our change in time. So delta T is five seconds. So we know the starting velocity, the ending velocity, and the time. What are we trying to find? What is the acceleration? So we now know that A equals our question. That's what we're looking for. So the first thing we do was we'd start with our formulas and look down the list. Sometimes you can eliminate them just by looking them over. If that's impossible, there's nothing wrong with writing a formula down, plugging into it, discovering you don't get anywhere and saying, well, this was not the right starting formula. I'll move down to the next one. So the first formula, you need to know delta X and delta T to find V bar. We don't know that. Um, we will move on to the second. The first formula doesn't seem to be terribly useful, so we'll move on to the next one. We don't know delta x. We do know delta t, and we know v0 and v final. We could actually use this equation. What it would give us, though, is delta x, which is the distance traveled, and they didn't ask us anything about that, so I probably won't write it down. If you did when you were trying to solve this question, there'd be nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't answer the question. If we move down to the third equation, acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. We discover we've got the change in time and the two velocities, we can use that to find the acceleration. So again, summarizing, we looked at the first formula, we can't use it. So we move down to the second formula. As I said, yes, we could use it, but it's not going to help us. You actually don't write, need to write down either step one or step two. I just wanted you to be able to follow my logic. So then we move on to step three, where we looked at the next formula in the list. We said, yes, we could use it. And so that means we need to write the formula down. We need to write it down. It is not enough to have the formula up here in the list. When you start to actually do the math to solve the problem, you need to write the formula down. I will count off if you do not do this. 
So you must write down the formula right here where you begin the actual problem. This is just a summary of information. Where you start the problem is where you need to write it down. So yes, we can solve for this. We are looking for A, we know V final, we know V zero, and we know delta T. So if we come along, I'll scroll up a little so you can see. When we plug in, we know V final, it was zero meters per second. We know V zero is 20 meters per second, and we know delta T, it's five seconds. They all go in the formula. Now we do some, more. and notice when you write the number down, you include the units of measurement. You never write a number without its units of measurement. I'll count off every time you leave the units off. So it's not just 20, it's 20 meters per second. It's not just five, it's five seconds. The so zero minus 20 gives us negative 20 in the numerator, five seconds in the denominator, and we see we have the negative 20 meters per second over five seconds, but we're not through yet. Answers are not left as fractions. Negative 20 divided by five leaves us with negative four. So if I scroll up so you can better see what we're doing. You will see that the acceleration is negative four meters per second squared. How did I get meters per second squared out of a meter per second in the numerator and a second in the denominator? Well, this little note explains it. If you have a meter per second divided by a second, meters per second gets written down. When you have fractions inside of fractions, you invert and multiply to clear the denominator. So the numerator gets written the way it is, a meter over a second. But the denominator as seconds gets turned upside down, so one over seconds, and it's multiplied by the numerator. You can see a meter times one gives us a meter, and a second times a second gives us a second squared. We're gonna use this a lot, so become comfortable with it. It's also important to know that if you insert numbers with the correct units into the problem, that the answer will come out with the correct units. And so acceleration is always measured in meters per second squared if we're using MKS units. So we would expect it to be in meters per second squared. And we would expect that minus sign because the car is stopping and you can't stop unless you have an acceleration that's pointing in the opposite direction from your velocity. So we had to have that negative acceleration. All right. The next example says, okay, same car, but now how long will the skid marks be? So we take the information from the previous example and add to it. You'll see in the list of knowns, we have the same V0, the same VF, the same delta T, but we've added this negative four meters per second squared as our acceleration because we know that we just found it. What are we looking for? It says, how long would the skid marks be? How long can be time? How long will it take for the car to stop? Or how long can be a distance? In this case, it's a distance. And so we're solving for delta x. And we have our same list of four formulas that we started out with. That acceleration is change in velocity over change in time that average velocity, which is V final plus V zero over two, is the same thing as delta X over delta T, that another way to write it is our first equation, and that the total distance traveled is V zero times T plus one half times acceleration times time squared. So you need to write those formulas down every time you use them. So just as before, we want to sort of start at the top and work our way down. So we want to look at the first equation. It's not going to be helpful. Yes, it has a delta x in it and a delta t, but nothing else that's helpful. If we look at the second equation, we are looking for delta x. We know delta t and we have v final and v zero. We could use this version of the equation. 
You can also use uh, the last version of the equations. The last equation in the list will also solve for delta x. We know v0, we know a, we know t, we could use it. So you could use the fourth equation or the second equation. You'll get the same answer. It doesn't make any difference. I'm going to go with the second equation simply because it's the one I come to first. They each have their pros and cons. So we'll use the second equation. We'll plug into it. You can see we've got delta x over delta t is v final plus v zero over two. That's our second equation. I plug into it, so delta x is in place. Time is five seconds, that goes in the denominator. V final was zero, v initial is 20 meters per second, and two is just two. We do a little arithmetic, zero plus 20 is just 10, is 20 meters per second. Divide that by two, we get 10 meters per second. So again, zero plus 20 is 20, 20 divided by two is 10. Delta X over five seconds is still five seconds. In order to get the delta X all by itself on the left-hand side, we have to get rid of the five. The five is in the denominator, to cancel it out, we have to multiply both sides by five. You have to multiply both sides of the equation by five. So I'm multiplying by five seconds. So delta x times five seconds on the left. The five seconds will cancel. 10 meters per second times five seconds on the right will 10 meters time per second times five seconds gives me 50 meters and on the left hand side the five seconds cancel and we're left with just delta x and as i said we could have used equation four but we didn't so for homework you'll want to look at these problems i think we'll stop right now and we'll talk about falling objects in the next video